Hi, my name is Sue Barrett. I am the clinical supervisor of the hospice department of Alliance Community Hospital. I'm here today to explain to you all about hospice. Hospice truly is a philosophy of care. It's not about where you live. It's about us coming to where you are. It is being there 24 hours a day, seven days a week to help you get through an extremely difficult time of life. We provide a lot of different things. We provide equipment, we provide supplies, we provide medication, and we also provide the education that goes along with it to help you know what to do during this time. Now that you've heard me talk about hospice care, let's meet some of the patients that actually have experienced the wonderful care provided by Alliance Hospice. I'm Garnet Young. Really why I'm in hospice is because when they diagnosed my case, the doctor said they had done all they could do for me and hospice would be the best place for me. He told me it would be approximately from a year to six months to a year. And praise the Lord, the year is over and I'm in the two months of the six months. So I'm going on and I'm going to try for another year. They are my friends. They keep my spirit up. They give me my medicine. Uh, they're pleasant. They're on time. They call me before they come so they just don't pop up at any time. And they just can't seem to do enough for me. When I need anything, all I have to do is call them and they'll bring it promptly. I try to give them a little week or so to get the medicine. No, they bring it the next day or the same day. <laughs> I remember when Becky and them first trying to convince me to go into hospice. One of the first things she asked me was, wouldn't you rather be home with your family when things happen than be in the hospital? And it took me a long time to answer that question because I knew in the hospital they would be right there if I needed. I, I, I do everything else here and it's nice to have them come in like uh, I feel free to talk to them about anything I want to rather than somebody come in real strict. Okay, Miss Young, we're taking your bath. See you. Bye. So I actually could sit here and be comfortable without, you know, if I was in the hospital or something, you just lay there and wait till they come and wait on you and do whatever. I do what I want to do here. So I enjoy being home. And I actually, I do not feel sick at all. I do not have any pains at all. One, one thing that uh, being in hospice, uh, my grandkids, they all live out of town, but it's nice that they can come here to the house, stay with me as long as they want to spend the night. But you know, hospice does a lot of things for you other than just take care of your medical needs. And all this I can get, enjoy being home. I'm James Conley, and the nurses can tell you, I've had quite a few of the hospice nurses up. And Katie can probably tell you the best is that, uh, they didn't think I was going to make it a couple of days. I, I proved them all wrong and uh, I wouldn't be for hospice, I wouldn't be here. You know what's hard is if you're off your feet for so long, you can't walk or anything. So they had John come out and help teach me how to walk all over again. And then uh, after I get to walking and everything, and uh, they brought Glenn in for my shoulder, and I've had Cindy from day one come out to help with the bathing, and uh, I won't let anybody else do it. I just I'm satisfied with her. She brought a couple out to help, you know. But I like I like Cindy the way, and uh, Katie has been awesome. But I'll tell you what, all of hospice. All of them. I've never met one yet that I haven't liked. And they've all got a great sense of humor. And 
they care about their patients. They'll call and check in and make sure I'm okay. If I, sometimes she'll come out twice a day just to make sure I'm doing good. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, anybody from hospice comes out here is my friend. That's all there is to it because they all do good. And, and that's that's one thing I like about it too. They, they work with you to help you get what you need. Because Katie, she comes out here every Tuesday and Friday to drain me. It's, I have a fort in my side, and that helps me from having to go to the hospital to get drained. So I got a, a son and a daughter. Even when the ones that were up here, they were scared because they didn't think I was going to make it either. <clears throat> and I've got nothing but the highest praise for hospice. Because I know if it wouldn't be for them, I wouldn't be here. I'd be, I'd be gone. Let's meet our hospice chaplain. A hospice chaplain provides emotional support and spiritual support, both to our patients and to our families. My name is Reverend Jonathan Dotson, and I'm the chaplain with Alliance Community Hospital Hospice. The chaplain serves as the spiritual caregiver for our patients and families as they go through this last few months of their life. The chaplain helps to provide and support uh, the process through grief that the family and the patient might be going through. There are several other volunteer chaplains that, that make up our spiritual care team for the, the hospice program. And chaplains can come into the family's home or wherever the patient is at. The option for spiritual care is that the patient and the family can either stay with their faith community that they're already members of and active participants of, or be reconnected to that faith community. Well, no matter what the belief system, uh, we can find that for them. There's always a chaplain available to meet with the patient and the family. One of the things that hospice believes in is that the patient has the right to not be alone when they die. And I love helping the family be present as fully as possible as they can be for that patient as they make this transition into what lies next. One of the common feedbacks that we get is they wish they had signed up for hospice sooner. To think about why we would want to sign up for hospice sooner is the concept of the idea that we need a lot of support as we approach the end of our life. If you think about it, our, our life is somewhat of a, of a circle. When we're born, we can't do a lot for ourselves. We can't walk, we can't feed ourselves. We need the support of somebody that's present with us, that can carry us. But the same thing goes when we approach the end of our life, except that we begin to lose those abilities slowly. We begin to not uh, walk as well. We need help getting from uh, the chair to the bed. Pretty soon we need help bathing and, and doing pretty much anything. And we, at that point in our life, need support more than any time. And that's what the hospice team does. One of the things that I really appreciate about our hospice program is that we offer spiritual care for anybody, no matter what their belief system. Give us a call over at our hospice office for more questions, to learn more, and find out how we can provide the best support for you and your loved one. Now let's meet one of the key members of the hospice team, the physician. My name is, is Dr. Cortesi and uh, I am the medical director of the Hospice Alliance, um, which is affiliated with the Alliance Community Hospital and serves the community of Alliance. My goal as a director of the hospice program is to sort of coordinate the care of the patient. So hospice started as a program mostly for, for cancer patients. But now, uh, with, with other diseases, of course, with the prolongation of, of life, um, many other uh, patients with other diseases are referred to hospice. So um, they probably represent, I would say now, the majority, the majority of our uh, hospice patients. The goal of, uh, of hospice is to keep patients comfortable and to make sure they are, they are in, a, in a good environment, like home or in uh, other places where uh, they can be taken care of. 
As we have seen, there are many members of the hospice team. Now let's talk about our grief program. I'm the bereavement coordinator of our program. Our bereavement program includes a 13 month following of the patient's family. We provide for a variety of services from one-on-one -on -one counseling services to phone calls to providing a grief support group that meets at our office. It's a six-week session that works through a workbook that we provide additional support to our families. We offer that twice a year. We have an ongoing support group that meets the first Tuesday of every month and then we have another support group that meets the third Tuesday of every month in which uh, is a social gathering where people get together and talk about some problems that they have come up with during their process of going and going back into a normal life after the loss of their loved one. The Alliance Hospice team is not complete without our amazing volunteers. Hi, my name is Joan and I'm a volunteer with hospice. In my case, I uh, have gone and spent time with patients. I have done overnighters where a caregiver has exhausted themselves by staying up uh, with their loved one. Uh, I will go and spend the night and they can get a good night's rest. Uh, I have gone and sat with families that they just wanted the uh, support of someone that was not a family member and someone from hospice. It's fun to go and visit and to take, uh, especially if it's around a holiday, uh, we take, sometimes we'll take a flower or a plant or some candy or any little thing. Uh, they get great pleasure out of uh, us bringing them small gifts. We want our patients to be as comfortable as we can make them. So we have been known to take in um, air conditioners for them. Uh, so we go, try to go out of our way to do whatever we can, can for the family as well as the patient. We have been known also to have patients that under our care, they improve to the point that we will transition them out of hospice, but they actually benefit from the care to the point that um, their life is extended. And uh, that's always a pleasure to know that they still have some quality time. I'm often asked, when, when should we seek hospice care for our loved ones? There, there are many different situations that could arise that would mean it's time for hospice. Some of those things could be the patient is going back and forth to the hospital many times in a short time period. Maybe it's time for hospice. Another one would be, you've went to see the doctor and the doctor has said there is nothing more medically we can do. Now it's about comfort for your loved one. Maybe the care of your loved one at home is becoming more difficult. Maybe now it's time to talk to your doctor about hospice care. Request the best. We are your community hospital and we are your community hospice.